Hi guys and guy. This is uh, of course me, Al, spiritual atheist, back once again. Uh, we left off uh, of a sort of talking about uh, the existence in the nonverbal world, if you want, the thinking nonverbally. And the point I was trying to make is this is uh, not alien or theoretical, probably to any of us. Uh, you know that not only do we spend the first year of our lives uh, living in, you know, or acting nonverbally, but we also do. Uh, well, many of us do anyway in their adult lives. At least we have these experiences. And in fact, we tend to find them so enjoyable that uh, in a way we become addicted to them. Um, if you know, uh, you know, a really accomplished athlete, his hand-eye coordination, there's no room for a verbal thought process in that. It's It's got to be a direct uh response. And that's the thing about, uh, you know, dropping the uh, interpreter, so to speak. You don't need to take the time. You know, you don't need to translate everything once you've got it. So, you know, that's what practice is about, I guess. And the same thing is true of musicians. Uh, if I do know musicians, and uh, they tell me the same thing, that they, when they get the piece down properly, it's like magic that they are someplace indescribable. Um, you know, athletes, musicians, certainly the visual artists, uh, my wife tells me that she thinks as much visually as she does verbally, if not more. So, you know, there we are. Uh, so, I mean, the thing is that people who experience this uh, in one way or another, whether they be mystics or boxers, uh, all report the same thing. It's uh, immensely enjoyable and insightful experience, sort of a, you know, a series of peak experiences if you want. The, uh, the mystics, on the other hand, are claiming that uh, this is just reality and, you know, that that's why it's enjoyable because you're, we're finally touching base. Now, the idea of a spiritual path comes to play here, then I go, okay, that sounds great. <laughs> okay, I want to be here in the present, but I'm here in the not present. I'm wherever I, I don't know. What what do I do? Where do I go? And the thing here is that there are actually maps of the journey. And that is sort of what I want to uh, really discuss today. And because uh, it's sort of a warning as well as a, uh, a, a, a methodology, if you want. Say that it, uh, I'm here in Maine and I want to go to California. And uh, I start studying the maps. And I notice that... Uh, Yes, I'll take this road out of Maine into New Hampshire. It says there's a bridge here. Now, I have other friends who uh, also want to go to California, and we're talking. I say, you know when you get down there, there's a bridge. You've got to go over that bridge. And they really appreciated the, uh, the, the hint and, you know, went on their way. And, uh, you know, that I stayed home studying the map. In fact, I could have spent my whole life studying the map, never taking one step of the journey, but actually became an expert in the journey. Anyone who wanted to take the journey, I would tell them where the pitfalls are. There's a side road here you want to avoid. Take a detour here. Uh, I would get Google Earth and I map the whole thing out in my mind and I know the journey from here to California like the back of my hand. And people marvel at my expertise of what that journey is like. And never, never until the day I die do I take one step of it. The world, sadly, uh, the spiritual world, the religious world, is full of these people, full of us, because I have to count myself as one of them. <laughs> you know, it's, if I can conceive of 
you know, because one one claim I make is that I probably am the world's greatest master at self-deception. And uh, that's something I've had to uh, learn to live with. In any case, if you are going to take this journey, one, you know, yeah, a map can be useful. But only, you know, like, maybe keep it just one step ahead of yourself or something. But you've got to make the journey. <laughs> you know, you're, you know you're, you're never going to eat the California orange off the tree if you don't get there. And no matter how much I describe the way from Maine to that orchard and all the details in between, and people come back and say, he was right, he was right, that's it. You know, it still didn't do me any good. No, I, I still stuck here. It's uh, strange. You know, and maybe, you know, I would organize people and we would put the map on the wall and I would, you know, maybe even give sermons on what's between New Hampshire and, uh, and, and, and New York, say, you know, and, and the best way and the scenes that you can see from it. And, you know, and other people, instead of making the journey, would become satisfied and they would join, join with me in this map study. And uh, we would actually, you know, be satisfied with that. We would think that was good enough, that we have become experts on the journey, we know the journey, and we've never taken one single step. Self-delusion is amazing. This is going to be very short. I'm going to end it now, Guy. Uh, couple points. My wife is a visual artist, not a musician, not that it, you know, ultimately matters. Uh, the reason I'm doing this now and getting it out so close after the last one is that I have a, a surgery scheduled for Monday. This is Friday. Uh, and uh, I probably don't know how much I'm going to feel like doing this uh, next week uh, as I recover. Uh, incidentally, I've had more damn surgeries uh, in the last two years than I've had <laughs> my entire life up to now. Oh, God Almighty. Anyhow, uh, that's, I think that's about it here because I just, this is sort of a warning. And uh, what I, I, I would have a tendency to call the, uh, the map lecturers uh, spiritual charlatans, but I think they aren't really. They've taken themselves in that there's almost an underlying belief that becoming an expert in map reading uh, will somehow magically transport you there after your death or something like this. Uh, I mean, they're, they're not really trying to con you, uh, but at the same time, there's sort of a desperation there for to be appreciated, to be acknowledged by others. Uh, it's something to be aware of when you seek spiritual friends. And uh, will you be my friend? <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to end. Uh, be kind to yourselves, really. Uh, I know I always say it, and I always mean it. You know, apply it to your breathing. You know, just don't hurt yourself with your breath, that's all. And um, take care.